Hello. We are on. Hello and welcome to the first forum of this fall. Right, we're back. Um, what we have today is a fun show and tell. And uh, this is uh, time to fit with the season of creation, which we have been celebrating in worship with hymns, liturgy, prayers, sermons, focused on both praise and awareness of the wonder, beauty, and interconnectedness of creation, as well as lament for realizing how we have not taken care of our planet the way stewards uh, should. So that has been our focus in worship. So if that is true, that we lament what we haven't done, and we are aghast at praise at the uh, unbelievable beauty of our, our planet, does that lead us to any action? Or do we just go, oh, that's just great. Everything's so beautiful. Um, and I think that uh, it's certainly clear that uh, uh, extreme weather, um, the conditions that, that we have seen over and over and over have led us to realize that we are in a pretty dire situation and that uh, there needs to be there needs to be action. We actually don't have that choice. So what kind of action, what makes sense, what can we do individually? Obviously, we're not corporations, we're not large movers and influencers. However, what we want to provide is some ideas that can be shared among those of us who um, have tried some products, have tried to use our intention um, by making choices. Um, I know that habits are hard to change. We just get in a routine. But if you have intention, and there's a good reason to make changes, it might be a little bit easier to do. And so that's that's our um, our idea for this forum. And we're going to have um, some show and tell. And on the Thursday email coming up this week, we will have a list of uh, the ideas and websites that some people have provided. To save paper, we decided not to do a handout today. So um, you will have information about how to access some of these products if you watch for the email next Thursday. So uh, to start, I want to draw attention to a nature writer, Terry Tempest Williams. Um, in fact, one of the uh, hymns, I to look at, is it? In the offertory or part of the worship that we have been singing the words, we stand on holy ground. Sherry, sure you remember we're in the our, our gathering. Our gathering. We have been singing that each uh, September Sunday. We gather, uh, we stand on holy ground, which is very similar to her comment, the world is holy, we are holy, all life is holy. Daily prayers are delivered on the lips of breaking waves, the whisperings of grass, the shimmering of leaves. So, George, do you want to go to the next one? And we're, we're going to just have a list of different ideas that have been submitted. Um, okay, Linda Zender is the first one, and she has a show and tell for us. Good morning. Good morning. When I was gathering my things this morning, I was thinking, when did I last do show and tell? <laughs> <laughs> so I did bring a few more things than listed up there, but basically looking at the school theme, reduce, reuse, recycle. What I personally try to do is balance those three. I mean, recycling is great, but it's not all there is. We're also consumers, and so I feel responsible with what I consume. So these are really cool little silicone bags that I was able to find online. 
Net Zero is the company, but there's a lot of other companies and you can see their logo, the turtle, because it really is a lot about sea life. So those of us who eat fish, there's a personal component to not wanting the ocean to be too polluted. Um, I did look on NOAA website, NOAA NOAA website, and they do list reduced use of plastics as the main thing you can do to help with the plastics in the ocean. You've probably heard about how there's big islands of plastics floating up there and recycling being secondary to that. So the other thing I got that I really like these are silicone lids. So instead of using plastic wrap and they're airtight, you just pull them over all different kinds of sizes. And this was also from the same company, Net Zero. And then these are my microwave covers. I don't know if you guys have seen these, but these are also silicone, so they're washable, so I don't have to use paper towels anymore. And I still don't have a microwave splatter, which is great. Um, and just one more thing for shopping, I try not to use the little plastic bags that they have on most rolls. If I do, because I forgot my bags in the car, I rewash them at all, if at all possible, to reuse them again. Maybe you guys use the green bags. But supposedly keep your produce for like about a month rather than just a couple days. I'm not sure if that's true, but they are washable, so I take those. And then just the little mesh bags that I found somewhere. So trying to reduce my use of plastic, reuse my use of plastic whenever I can. Um, and the other website, I haven't sent this to you yet, but that I really like, there's a website that's called repurpose.global. And it talks a lot about plastic use in the ocean and kind of from an organizational standpoint what they're trying to do to get plastic out of the environment. So questions for Linda? It was an I was reading yesterday in a book called Simple Liturgies that besides saving on the cost of your dryer, oh, uh, besides saving on the cost of your dryer, if you hang your wash out on a rope, as I did when I was a boy helping my mother, you're really making it's making you think that you are in some sense in community with people around the world for whom this is the only way you can dry clothes. And so while you're doing this, you're actually thinking about them. And maybe it has an effect on you. So thank you for mentioning that. But I think back to sometimes is my grandmother who lived in Walla Walla had clothes lines in her basement. She never owned a dryer in her life. And so I think about that. And I really only use mine seasonally when the weather's like this, because I don't have a place indoors to put on a clothesline. But what it really makes me do is the time it takes to get your laundry outside, get your clothespins, put the clothesline up, hang the clothes up. It really forces me to slow down a little, which is great. And I notice things around me happening, like which birds are around. Um, so yeah, I really do it. It's also blind racks. I have a point in my watch, and I can hang it from the ceiling in Brady Yard. I do a lot of air drying. And wash only with cold water. Questions for Linda. Thank you. And um, we'll have these things here. Uh, maybe we can take a look afterwards. Um, so the next one, uh, Mommy is going to be doing a presentation at the end on these. And so I think we'll just let you uh, wait that out. I want to mention about the canning jars because when she sent that to me, there's something about this um, projector that doesn't show up. Right side of the screen, we don't have to open it again. But maybe somebody can figure that out. So, when, when uh, Ronnie's suggestion came through about using old fashioned canning jars for my mom's, so I went, Oh, me too. And uh, what I realized was the aesthetic pleasure I get from using these old canning jars that I remember in my childhood having canned pears. And, can peaches and can applesauce. And, and so 
you know, sometimes a little bit of aesthetic pleasure, like being outside here the birds, can add to the enjoyment of, um, of what we decide to do. Um, Marilyn isn't here, she's out of town. Um, she intentionally uses and washes and reuses plastic bags. Using leftovers. I forgot I was going to look up how much food is wasted. If you've ever seen the amount of food is wasted in our country, it's just un unbelievable. Um, so, intentionally using up soup or something out of, out of the leftovers that you have to cover in the back of the fridge is a way of um, honoring the fact that that was grown and it was produced yet on the earth and by labor of others. And that's, I think that's a, a spiritual intention of a, around food. Um, Susan Whitney is also out of town. She, her idea was stocking up with um, things that can be washed rather than thrown away and have those handy for picnics. Um, so, George and Sharon. Show you some little things first. Um, one of them is commuting, and I, I'm going to share with you an app called Bright Action App. And I've gone in and filled up the details about our vehicles and about our energy use, and it gives you um, what, what use you have and compares it to others in the world and where they think we need to be uh, to perpetuate the, the life of our. Our country basically. So, and I found that the energy used for driving was the most significant in our household. So, at that point, I used to drive uh, five days a week to, to Gate Harbor, and Sharon also would drive three days a week to Tacoma. So, I said, well, that's one way we'll start, is I'll just commute with her on the days that she goes. So, she drops me off at work, goes to work, and then picks me up on, on the way back. And then after our uh, five weeks on the, the trail, um, realized you still need to do more. So uh, basically now I'll just drive, I started just Thursday, we got back on my days and driving to the Purdy Park and Ride, taking the bus into work and then doing my walking, walking back to the Purdy Park and Ride. So that cuts even more consumption of a fuel, which again is the biggest one, and I'll show you in right action how that how that works um, uh, in our household at least. That's the biggest one. So we looked into toilet paper, right, and found out that you know either recycled um, paper, toilet paper, or a bamboo product are are probably better for our environment. So I researched this company, it's at a real, so you can go to real.com. And they actually have used areas that they didn't cut trees to plant the bamboo. It's all out of China. It's a um, minority owned, partially minority owned business. Um, and so it's all bamboo. And they also then use a, a, a compostable bag. So I can just throw this in our compost bin afterwards. And again, even the roll inside is just paper. So we can recycle the paper. So basically everything can be uh, recycled and used and not as since bamboo grows so much quicker um, than others. And a lot of our paper, like your charmins and stuff, comes out of the boreal forests. And that is all the forests up in Canada, but they're cutting at a tremendous rate to supply the paper that's there. So that doesn't say recycled or bamboo. It's typically in our area, uh, all cut in Canada and goes to a couple of processing plants, ones in Idaho, uh, to create the, the paper. Question? How does the bamboo for the septic system? It's supposed to do well. You know, it's part of the research too, because we have a septic system. Obviously, we've just been doing it for the last five, six months, so we haven't seen, actually, we need to have somebody even come out, because we had 
now that Pierce County they're being more proactive on every three years at least you have to have yours inspected. So we had ours inspected recently to meet that requirement and all looks looks good in the system. So um, one way, same with even our toilet paper product. You know, if we're bringing in toilet paper, which is great to supply people that really have needs, but at the same time destroying our forests, maybe we we could look at that a little bit differently the next time we have a toilet paper product. So when I first saw this, I thought, oh, bamboo. <laughs> But when you open it up, is it just like paper? Yeah, just like paper. paper. It's not a little rash you like to buy. <laughs> Again, we used to provide weeks on the trail. I mean, you're not the Pacific Crest Trail, you carry out your stuff as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's your life quite well. You end up out on the trail. So. And the other thing we went to, especially since we create our own meals when we're on the trail, so we've gotten some compostable bags, both snack and sandwich bags, put things into. And what I have found actually is they're easier to clean and reuse than typical plastic one actually will last longer. But when we get to a point where it's not usable or you have an exemplar that you really don't want to be you know, after washing, use again. Again, I just put it in my compost bin and it'll, it'll break up. It's all made out of vegetable, vegetable product. Yeah. Um, I ended up getting these. They're uh, real responsible, is the name of the company. And Amazon has had them. I think you can probably go same with real. I would you go directly to real uh, for the paper. I think you can for responsible as well. Amazon carries it also. So you'll put it on that list. Yeah, I'll give it to her so she can put that on the list. Yeah, we, we get uh, bamboo. Toilet paper from a different source, and David has it set up that they just send a big box of it to us on a regular basis. So it's very convenient. It's exactly. not like going and ordering it every time. Right. Um, it's not like cloud. Yeah. Yeah. Cloud's another one that's very reputable and do the similar. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've tried that before, and usually they have some recycled paper stuff at times, but not. So. Yeah, yeah, I don't. And then we have it's a little bit bigger thing. Again, you're out on the trail and you're, you're carrying everything you own that you need on your back, and you start looking looking around. At, um, I brought these. We went to a, a meeting and talking about the uh, dams on the Snake River. That they're trying to, they're talking about removing, and there's, um, I think they actually have basically the governor and one of our senators has promoted it. Um, but it, it had the people, tribal people, come and talk um, about, you know, what, what that means and, and how it would help both the, the native population, especially there, for their. Mm -hmm. Ceremonies and their life, their livelihood, but then it also looked at the salmon themselves and what they provide for the orcas. Um, had a, somebody just threw a question at us the other day as we were starting our last week on the trails. And so, how much is it worth paying to preserve the life of the southern resident uh, whales, um, the southern Puget salmon? How much are you willing to pay, you know, to do that? And, and I kind of reversed the question in my mind as I was thinking, uh, thinking, what have we not paid along the way at the true cost of what we've done that's now put the Southern resident whales in jeopardy? So one of those ways, even in talking about dams, where this is not oh, that's hydroelectricity, it's cheap. You know, we can't, can't get rid of that. That's one of the biggest fallbacks. And I say, well, that becomes a consumption issue. You know, if you can, if you reduce consumption, you at least then have opportunities to reduce maybe a dam or something like that. So I have a Sphere Solar Energies presenting a, a, a solar panel um, project to us on Tuesday, which I'll further details it, I get more details. Um, so they're, they've taken, I've taken pictures for them and they look at the, the usage again. We in the Northwest, because we do have hydroelectricity, it's fairly cheap. Our electricity is so much cheaper than anywhere else. 
Um, so it, it, the cost savings probably won't be that significant. But to me, it's it's not that point. To me, it's I'm reducing my usage of even hydroelectric provided energy. And if we all do different things to do that, so like I know they have a lot of solar panel organizations, so they put solar panels and you can invest in them, and then they put, provide energy for uh, electric, electrical energy to groups of people. So you can't do it yourself on your own, your own home, um, or if you're not you're in your facility, whatever it ends up being, um, sometimes you can invest in those things which allow it to, to be more, uh, more available and more useful. Uh, so I'll fill you in on that and we'll find out. So, um, do you want to think about? So, my family and I had a vacation this last week. We're supposed to be in South Lake Tahoe. But when we got there, the air quality was over 400 because of the mosquito fire. So we ended up, we were talking about coming home. We ended up being able to find a place, drove down to Las Vegas, which wasn't our intent. But we did the boat trip on Lake Mead. And so the Hoover Dam, and I think probably everybody has heard about how the water level has dropped, but they're wondering if they're going to be able to generate electricity there due to the water level being lower than the spillover. Yeah, we were in Stahik and then at 500 parts per million, the smoke was all the way down to the ground. And then we have some pictures to show of the four distinct uh, burn areas that we went through just in Washington alone um, on our track on the Pacific Crest Trail. Um, some of them as long as the, the Norse Fire, um, like the Chinook Pass, there's nine miles that just burnt for us. And, Another one that we were just in the Alpine Lakes region, and it just happened to be a real eerie wind was blowing through, and it seemed like the trees were mourning um, as they were just making it out there. And that's here, and there's a lot more work. Right now, we didn't get to finish the last 64 miles because it's closed. The trail lives for fires in Canada and northern Washington. Um, plus, again, there's the fire that just the ones that's off of Stevens Pass and Spade Polish. We were at Stevens Pass in the morning. I saw the cloud come up of the plume of smoke. I did something wrong over there. It's been a perfectly clear sky. That's not a, a cloud. <laughs> and sure enough, we have friends that came over to pick us up, and they were probably the last car to get, to get through before they closed Highway 2 on the west side. So you've got those fires, and there's several more fires up a little bit further north on still on the west side. Who's on the west side? And curious thing, something I need to investigate is that there's still a lot of water up there. We had a pretty good season of snow and rain accumulation. So it just has to be things are getting drier and things are perpetually drier because there's been more water. You look at the creeks were a lot better this year than we had done two years ago when we've done the section section maintenance of it. So it's just an accumulation of years of drying out that's uh, set the stage for some of this to happen. If, you, if you'd like, these are um, two calendars I have still uh, designed and created and drawn by Native people in the cool Sierra. Uh, this is one that's kind of hosted when they sent this out uh, in the English. And uh, again, Don had brought this up and I was just listening to a uh, uh, Kimber talking about moths yesterday and the idea of attention. When you start to be attentive to something, it leads to intention. You change, you notice some things, and hopefully then that will eventually lead to action. You can do something about it. So I think attention is a huge thing, just like us here right now. We're, we're paying attention, we're looking at possibilities. And hopefully that changes our behaviors and our intent. Thanks so much, Georgie. You're just a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> um, and I appreciate you sharing that. Um, Charlene, did you want to comment about yours? Well, just pretty simple. Um, make sure that you buy your milk products in paper. No, we can stay from here. Yeah. All right. 
I'm just cognizant now of making sure I don't buy milk products in the plastic jugs. I buy them always in the uh, wax paper containers to eliminate some plastic and use using paper laundry sheets for laundry that come in a little box instead of a heavy plastic messy jug. And you can get those online. I see them starting to show up in the grocery store now. This is one that um, I use uh, laundry sheets. It comes in, a, as you can tell, it's a, um, a recyclable box as opposed to a great big gigantic um, plastic jug that you might be familiar with. Um, but um, the sheets are just very easy to do because you just put them in the wash in the washing. And um, one of these is, is I think you get a really huge load of these too. But so this would last a long time and you don't have the harsh chemicals that go into the water through the septic tank and then out into, the, into our water trays. Yeah. You said it doesn't last a long time. It, it dissolves? I mean, it dissolves. Oh, it completely dissolves. Yeah. Oh, okay. What I mean is, there's dissolve. 50 sheets oh, in here. So 50 loads. So 50 loads. Yeah. Yes, Lynette? So, can you tell me the difference if I buy milk products in the aseptic packaging, the, the paper packaging? Those don't recycle anymore. They have to go in the garbage. But a plastic jug goes in my recycle bin. So where's the trade-off there? Good question. And actually, Ridwell, uh, the company that recycles a lot of different products, they're going to come on the, the second of October to our forum and lead that forum. And that might be a good question to ask them because they're the ones that are researching um, who, who's doing what, what the cost of it is. So I keep that question open for them because um, I'm hoping that those are some of the things we'll, we'll find out. But um, they're going to come out and talk about their program. So get somebody with some knowledge. It might be, I haven't looked at all of the videos in this Bright Action app. She can go in and I'll just show you. And, and you can learn just ways that you can save energy in different ways or product that you can use differently. So they have lots of videos that, that go into that and whether they talk about that. Yes. The laundry sheet, I don't know. Where did you where do you buy them? I mean, are they in the grocery stores already? Right. This is an online and it will be it, yeah, it will be in the email of the attachment or a link probably on Thursday's email that will give a lot of uh, sources for the products that we're How can we get grocery stores? They are starting to carry them. I, I, yesterday or the other day when I was shopping, I did see some laundry detergent stuff that was in paper and some sheet, sheets and stuff. But the best thing is to store them on. What, what I often do at grocery stores now is I call the grocery store and say, hey, I'd like to, and it's, it, by calling them and contacting them, they, they know what an interest is, and that might spark them in the same way, attention, oh, well, maybe, maybe this is a bigger thing, maybe we need to bring this, or at least try it out. So just a couple comments. When I use my dryer, what I use is dry walls. You can get wool dry rolls, you can get them at home goods, you can get plastic dry rolls. Yeah, mine are fine. I don't know why, but they work great. And whatever static is left, you can just kind of shake it out because I've heard that I'm hoping these are better, but I've heard chemicals and some of the dryer sheets are bad for our health, let alone the environment. So I don't know. I just went to dry rolls and maybe these are better. Hopefully, okay. these are so, oh, that's detergent. Yeah, that's it. So, oh my gosh, I totally misunderstood. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the dryer balls are great. And then the other question I have for Ridwell when they come, and I maybe you guys have been wondering about this too. We heard stories for a while that people are recycling, and then if there's no market for what you put in your recycling bin, it ends up in the landfill anyway. 
So I'm hoping that they know exactly what is and isn't marketable because like when you put stuff in recycling, I have no idea where it goes. Yeah, I'm sure they'll cover that. I have read that 90, they say that 90% of what they get, they are able to get to companies that recycle it and they're asking for specific things pretty much when they're when they're doing it. So again, Ridwell when they come. Notice if you have Murray's um, a garbage, um, every so often they make a change to the value of your recyclables. And I think that where they can sell that is directly proportional to the value that it has. Sometimes it's very little and the next thing you know, it jumps up and you wonder, oh, how come my bill changed? And it's usually because of the value of the recyclables. And there, and we'll start researching some other, like I've gone to a place in Renton that they'll take old wire cables and, and they recycle all of those. They'll take any kind of metal. Um, it's just it's just this private little business that's there that I took a truckload of stuff that's you know, on the lawnmower, they process lawnmowers, whatever, whatever it takes. So we'll start looking. I'm hoping there's more of those around here. I know that the Tacoma Recycling Center is back to accepting styrofoam because they had their machine was down for a while, but there's also an awarding their company that recycles. So just try to find those locations. And that's a good point because we're all members of Pierce County. If you are in Pierce County, if you might be not in Pierce County and you can take stuff to the Tacoma landfill because you're in Pierce County, that goes for um, all, all types of recyclables and also um, things that are dangerous chemicals too. You have to sign your address so that they know that you're in Pierce County. But um, if you know where that is, off um, Holland Street, or Tacoma, not too far um, off the beaten path. They're right back behind the home depot there on Bowling, but they take a lot more stuff that doesn't get picked up in the earth or things. So it's just a matter of, for me, I'll wait, I'll accumulate stuff from work and home and then take it in mass um, as, as needed. I've got a full, a full load for it. So they take a lot more of the product. Actually, Rebecca did uh, submit that, and so when we get to her, you want to go to the next slide? That's the last one I have, and that. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, Rebecca, do you want to talk about? Uh, she sent uh, some information which will also come out uh, about this recycling in Tacoma, which I thought was very helpful. You know how when you have in Murray, Murray's been and uh, for recycling, and they're really particular about what they can, and they sort of seem to change. I was looking to see they change a little bit about what they will accept, but there's a lot of things like. Uh, Maybe you guys buy your little red tomatoes a different way, but we buy those little flimsy clamshells, and Murray's recycling will not take those. And also, we have big chunks of styrofoam. So, at some time during the pandemic, uh, we just took this big bag of stuff we accumulated and we didn't want them to move that over to the, um, uh, the mall and location, which is a little tricky to find if you haven't been there. It's like turn at uh, the by the Home Depot, but then you just keep going, 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 and finally, there on the left is a place where there's, it's real, it's real well marked. It's a covered place with a lot of different bins that are marked. There's a couple of uh, worker guys there who helped, helped my hand a lot and said, yeah, this goes here, that goes there. No, we can't take that. And um, <clears throat> the styrofoam in particular, I mean, one of you were saying, I'm glad to hear that they're taking styrofoam again, because they said, well, our machine won't take styrofoam now, so we've been hanging So <clears throat> there's just a lot more opportunity to recycle things, perhaps, than uh, what our Murray's been offers. I just have a question. So the clamshells, even if you take the lid off, they can't recycle it. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay. what, I, what I asked was uh, with the clamshells, if you take the cut the lid off. Will they still not take it? My understanding, and it'll be interesting to hear from the people who have come 
is uh, it's more the flimsiness and it uh, of the plastic. And so some companies have machines that can chomp up or process the heavier plastics, but the lightweight plastics end up kind of contaminating the paper because they get, I don't know how it even works, but they, so it's not what shape it is. It's I think more what kind of plastic it is. And you know how they have the little triangles on the bottom that are one and five and three and all that. Uh, again, with Murray's, it's more the heftiness of the plastic to be able to manage it. And then at the recycle center, they have a bin and it says, this is the like one and five here and three here. And it's just whenever I go to Tacoma for another errand, I'll take my bag that we have accumulating over time and you can stash it. They also take uh, bubble wrap and they also take uh, those things that come from Amazon when you get a little envelope that has the little plastic. If it's all plastic, if it's the paper on the outside and bubble wrap on the inside of the envelopes, they won't take that because it's mixed. But if it's all plastic, they'll take it. So we you get too many of those. So they, also, they take lids. They take little lids. They take big lids, you know, like to yogurt containers and pipes. She's, yeah. Scrap metal. They take scrap metal. They take scrap metal. Once in a while, they take appliances, like if you're trying to offer an appliance. Sometimes you have to check and see, but sometimes they'll take appliances. Like I've gotten rid of old stove there before because they have a little spot where they say drop your appliances. So I put my stove there and they do whatever with it and scrap metal, batteries. Um, and like Ronnie said, the hazardous waste is there too. It brings me a little sidebar to, uh, have you noticed over on uh, 144th and Peacock, no, not Peacock, Crescent Valley, and also at the top of Drum and I live over that way, uh, there are these open areas where it seems to be, oh, look, people are taking all their old sofas and with or without cushions and all kinds of other things to, quote, recycle. And, um, uh, I just found out recently that the Pierce County Pink Trash Pickup goes by those locations regularly and then picks that stuff up and hauls it off. So it's good if somebody actually wants those things. But otherwise, we are paying for people to not take their stuff to the dump. So far. <laughs> Um, I apologize, I have two more slides that somehow got lost in transition. Uh, one of them was Bruce and Sherry. Do you want to, uh, which of you want to talk about your idea as well as another kind of line machine? Right? Okay. We've done a couple of things over the past few years. Uh, for at least 10 years, we've been driving one hybrid car that's good. Gas cars, which costs a lot, and then just in the past few years, we've got two of them now. Between the two, they're averaging mid 40s to upper 40s in the gas market, so it both helps not use so much gas and also helps the pocket work. I'm driving a lot less, I'm working half time now, so I'm not going over to the home all the time. That's also helping me. And one of the other things we did when we moved in from a new house over here about eight and a half years ago, uh, we replaced an aging well, wasn't that old, but a no name contractor special gas only furnace in the house with a pretty sophisticated heat pump system by train. And it has the outside compressor unit and then inside air handler and furnace is a considered a dual fuel system. So down to somewhere around 30 or a little bit of the which one is outside that functions as a heat pump so they can have air conditioning and heat. And then below that, it switches over to a gas furnace unit. And that just saves a huge amount of money for us. It's actually a cool system, too. The inside and outside unit you know, talk to each other. When you decide on the basis of the outside temperature and what, what the inside is calling for, how fast they need to run. So the outside compressor can scroll down to, you know, this kind of weather, this is maybe 20, 25% that it's running. And the inside air handler does the same thing, so you're not listening for the blower run at high speed either. It runs at 20% also, so you hardly hear it. 
this time of year, the electricity price is really quite low. And since we, as George said, have so much uh, hydro, wind, and solar power, the electricity will be argued to the So those are some small things to okay. avoid those. And they work quite well. Questions for Elizabeth? We've recently started using Earth Breeze, which is another company that makes the farming uh, sheets that, that are just so. And my daughter suggested um, what she does is she takes hers and just tears them up into little pieces, you know, two or three inch pieces, sprinkles them around, and she says that she gets a better. The soap doesn't get all concentrated and it gets spread through the laundry much easier. So, here's another brand that we just started using. Um, I was wondering if you're using them with a tumble action washer or a other kind of washer. I just, I'm wondering if my tumble action washer will have enough water in it to dissolve them. Um, yeah, it shows on the package. That you can put them in your uh, detergent thing for certain kinds of washers and put them in your tub for others. So I, ours doesn't use a lot of water. Front load and top load washing. Oh, yeah. So it works for both. Right. But I thought your idea was good that you could put them in the top. So take just a tear of them and sprinkle them around. It doesn't use that much water. Mm -hmm. I was going to say Uh, I heard your story about the um, the um, change that you made to your gas furnace, and you know that Peninsula Light still has a, a program for people with electric heat, um, and they will help you buy a little wall heat pump. I had all electric heat in our house, and I had a family member change to the heat pump, and then uh, it's just an indoor unit and not one that was hooked up for it, so it's called Douglas. And it cost about three thousand dollars, but they paid over half of it. They're still anxious to, to install those, but you do have to have electric key. But mine still has the electric key. Inside source on that one, I think a buyer for Jenska who makes a lot of this product. And they're having all the troubles that everybody else has from a supplier standpoint to get a product <laughs> into the lending. So I think a lot. Cindy, you're showing that. All right, mine goes back to um, reducing our consuming of single use plastics. So, we use a company called Grove Collaborative, and uh, they have a lot of products that we can use to. But we pretty much stop buying um, plastic bottles, and we use glass bottles and, uh, for any of our cleaning products. And when you buy a plastic bottle in the grocery store, it's mostly water. And so the refills come in little plastic, or excuse me, little glass bottles. And uh, then we just refill. And it's really concentrated. Um, we use uh, solid shampoo bars instead of plastic bottles. And uh, things like uh, our refill liquids, like our foaming hand soap and our dishwashing detergent. Uh, the refills come in an aluminum bottle, so those are recyclable. And uh, walnut um, scrubber sponges or something else we use. And they just, uh, they kind of made a mission to send stuff out instead of in plastics to use a lot of paper products. And the goal of the company is to become plastic free by 2025, I think is what their slogan is. And so also uh, laundry sheets, Anyway, they use it's a great uh, online resource and they have so many different products that I feel like I can just go to one and there's just all kinds of stuff in there. So I'm not like searching for that. It's called Grow Collaborative. Learned about it first from Glenn. Glenn Downs, uh, when we did one of these, uh, when we were doing our forum, it was all online. She had mentioned that. I, that was our focus once about a couple of years ago. So I, we've been using it for quite a long time. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention, we're all using, uh, pretty much all using reusable grocery bags, but this is a, a resource I found, and I've been using these for, oh my gosh, probably five, six years now. 
um, but it just makes it really handy because I got so tired of having the bags slipping and sliding all over the trunk of the car, and then half the time I forget it and go back. So anyway, uh, they're a reusable nylon. They go through the laundry really quickly, and um, I just clip it. It's a little care of it. So it just clips on my bag and it clips on the grocery cart. And this way, I remember to use my bags. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, shampoo bars and also conditioning bars um, instead of using uh, plastic bottles. How do you work it? Oh, open it up. It's just like a bar of shampoo and you just, yeah. Bob doesn't use it as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> he also helps us to reduce our use. He's really good for me. <laughs> All right, this is an amazing collection of ideas. Anything else from people who are here that uh, wanted to share anything? And we'll come on Ronnie, who's done some research on bees, which is a very helpful. Uh, well, I was going to make cotton on the computer, but I decided to go to the top this time. But first, yes, it's true. This curve, I mean, I'll put this here. Oh, so, you know. Three yards on the older lines so you want to be visible. Half a million lines in the This jar is really old. It's older than I am. My mother used it. And this one is uh, probably newer. But if you don't have any, or have moved and threw everything away, um, you can get um, spaghetti, spaghetti sauce comes in a pretty sturdy, uh, not a whole quart, I think it's like a pint and a half jar that are very useful. Um, very common. Classic, but classic comes in a sturdy one that you can use for almost all purposes. So how I got into the Mason Bee thing was, of course, through Cindy. And, um, what I found was that um, I did have mason bees at my house because Vic Holm had made me a little mason bee house about four years ago. And um, it was just a four by four that was about six. Wow. This is my latest part. This is good <laughs> house that I have is um, a four by four and he drilled holes in it. Now, the, and, and, and I posted it out on my back uh, deck. It's actually facing west, but you're supposed to make them face east, south, according to the gentleman from Washington State University that provided this information. So mason bees are most useful if you have early, things that need pollination early in the season because they come out about March, but they go back in their holes about, at least by the middle of June. So their fruit tree and uh, japonica bushes, that, or you might call them lily of the valley bushes, um, those are one of their favorites. And I didn't realize that they pollinated stuff other than fruit trees, but yes, they do. They have their favorites. So at any rate, I was looking online for a project that kids could make. And this was the project that I saw online. Now, of course, these, these are paper rolls that I rolled around uh, a brown pencil and made them the same length as the can. However, the can is not the easiest can to find because nowadays, a lot of cans are stamped in one piece and you can't take the top and the bottom out. I don't know if you've noticed that, but especially American products are that way. So the best ones you find are the products from Asia that have a rigid top and a rigid bottom. And then, of course, I put these in there, but they shrank a little. That's why they're falling out. So I had to stick a couple more in. So I took them, took this example over to the gentleman at, at the at Zimmel Homestead last Saturday, where he gave a talk, and he said that this is good. However, I cannot hang it because the bees are very picky about vibration. 
If this was to go back and forth in the wind, they would never settle in there. So you have to put it in a place and secure it so that the wind won't bother it. And this is how the south side of the cut. So I've had the bees coming back for about four years, but I never know what's actually in there like you do, because yours comes apart. So there are many, many better styles of uh, bee houses than the one I have. I'm just in, in the spring, the holes uh, in February are all covered over. And then in March, they open up and they're empty. So I'm assumed that they hatched out and they're out doing their thing. And then by June, they're covered over again like little cement cellulose kind of stuff. So I think they're healthy, but when you have a subscription like Cindy does for the one that's out front, um, you know whether or not those be the um, larva are producing. And also when you send it away, um, they scrub it for bad things that can be in there and can be infecting the bees. So this is a, uh, when you mentioned the words that attention leads to intention, I had to say, I wasn't really sure what they look like. I just let them do their thing. But they are not bee colored. These are kind of a, they're, they're bluish black. So if you saw these guys out running around in your yard, you might not even know they were bees. They wouldn't your traditional bee colors or the ones that you get on the promotion like buy a bee, love a bee, have a t-shirt uh -huh. for a bee and all that stuff is not this bee. So after these guys are done, you know, then of course there's going to be bumblebees and bumblebees are black and yellow and then there's honeybees that have the traditional, I guess you call bee coloration. And I just noticed that once, the, once these guys were done, I had a lot of bumblebees in the yard. Because I have um, planted uh, a lot of flowers that they like. They like, um, but it has pink um, flowers and it's like oregano. Anyway, I'll put it in this. Marjoram, that's it. <laughs> Marjoram is a um, um, Mediterranean herb. Grows about this tall and has pink, pink and lavender flowers. And I planted it around my um, my driveway, and so they're just covered with bees in the spring. And then, of course, the margin are very happy when we get this water, and so it's kind of died off. But that's kind of summer. And now the honeybees were up. Uh, where did they come from? So I asked this gentleman, he said, I don't have any honey, any hives or anything. He said, honeybees travel as much as 200 yards. They are not just in their own home, they're out and about. And so I don't know who's got honeybees in my neighborhood, but somehow they're getting to my yard and um, now those are the dominant bee. But I didn't know one bee from another until I started taking their picture with my camera, <laughs> which is not easy because they don't just <laughs> And so, <laughs> Yes. Intention led to attention, and I'm still in the learning mode, mm -hmm. but there's a lot to know about bees and the different kinds of bees that uh, maybe somebody, I remember um, at Peninsula, uh, Theodore Rowe, he had bees, all types of bees, well, I was in college there, but uh, he has a great hobby for kids, but, you know, I did successfully in the same thing. But anyway, that's, that's my story. Now. The information here tells all about um, how to take care of the bees, how you can um, get them cleaned. Um, now this gentleman even does it himself and sorts them and puts them in his fridge to keep them cool. And he has a little um, glass of water in there with them because they have to have the humidity. And this didn't seem like Sydney's play was better. <laughs> <laughs> Because that you have to truly be committed in order to sort all these um, uh, bees after and learn them out of the hive. So, questions? Yes. Our daughter in law has some bees, so it's time to share. They're more worth me. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty sensitive. Um, first, if they don't, conditions are right, and the hive is, is not too overheating. They all leave. And you can either find them and put it back in the hive, 
we use lots of tools. Right. So there's a whole lot more science in this information that makes oh, good. Start with Mason Keys, maybe. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, I'm kind of in the middle of the road with my Mason Bees. I want a little round thing. It's a little round house at Wilco, and they sell the little straws in the cardboard. And so what I do is when they hatch out, you can tell which of those little straws were used. I just throw them away and then put clean ones in. So that's the clean out part. And then what I do is I take them in like they recommend in the end of September. I have a shelf in my garage that's right over my laundry. And so it's enough moisture and it's cool enough. So they just sit on the shelf and whoever makes it through the winter makes it through the winter. Uh -huh. So pretty simple. You have a practical approach. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to have to leave. Gina, who's going to be here next year? Okay. Uh, next week, uh, we would like um, Dave Sherry. And he was a video. Several years ago, uh, some of us went to St. Mark's and heard him. He wrote a book of poetry on Holden. So if, even if you haven't been to Holden, they're just beautiful. And I'm not a big poetry person, actually, but they are very accessible. They're just lovely, and even I think everybody would enjoy them. Anyway, he was, we called him and he said, Please you come back and and share his poetry with us and um, whether you've been to hold him or not, I think the nature part for all of us is really a good place. So um be sure to come back. He's kind of he was a little nervous about coming to talk <laughs> and he went to the table over there and checked out the place. So I hope there's an audience. So please come to Bob and he's very easy, he's very accessible, uh, easy to understand it's not And just really quick, Bright Action app, what I was talking about, even if you have to sign up, you don't have to sign in with any other group, but it gives you little videos in all these areas. So you can click on it and it will give you, you know, what you can do to save energy at home, or in this case, that's what you're spending most of your energy on. It, it'll give you videos and stuff, things that you can do. So it's just a lot of information there. If you're interested in checking out, you don't have to do any more than kind of signing up. They just ask what county and city you're from. And so they can relate it to costs and types for that area. So just something else to, as a resource. Well, thank you all. This was very good. We had a lot of great ideas. And again, uh, as Phyllis said, she'll get them in the email coming up Thursday, uh, each of the ideas, plus where you might be able to find, find them. So thank you all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.